Dr. Srinata Suresh from Odyssey, Journey of Life. There is a saying, if you can't fly, try to run. If you can't run, try to walk. If you can't walk, try to crawl. You keep moving towards your goal. So that's what our special guest today, Mrs. Sveta Singh, is about. Thank you, Dr. Srilata. Thank you for having me. She's a charming, beautiful lady from India, Uttar Pradesh. A warm welcome to you, Sveta Singh. Namaskar to all our gracious audience. Um, it's always blissful listening to such a beautiful introduction. It's always music to my ears. And yes, it's me, a simple girl who still has lost to achieve. So today I'm so privileged and honored to be here at Odyssey Journey of Life talk show. And thank you so much once again, Dr. Shilata, for inviting me. Uh, about Mrs. Shweta, her journey is not very rosy, I should say. She lost her father at a younger age. She had to go to school around, I mean, I think uh, 50 kilometers she has to travel and that too she has to travel by bicycle and uh, boat and public transport. It's not, it's not easy. And she didn't leave with that. She completed her education and then, she, and I should, uh, I should say that she, uh, from uh, UP, she's from a rural UP and she's the first lady pilot from UP and she has got plenty, lots of award for it. Congratulations Mrs. Sutta. Thank you, thank you so much. Can you, can you tell something, a brief about yourself? Yeah, so Dr. Srilata, as I mentioned, I'm a very simple person and uh, whatever I've achieved in my life, thanks to my mother who believed in me, as you already mentioned about my journey. So these are all you know, a little bit of baby steps which I had in my life, but still it's a lot to go on. I'm working really hard for that. For me, it's all about living a legacy, legacy of love, legacy of kindness. I want to do a lot because I come from a rural part of uh, India and I've seen the struggle there with no infrastructure. As you think about it, education is the basic necessity which every, every child needs. And when you have to travel so hard just to get this small thing in your life, you know, just to understand like, once you have it, how independent you can be. So I think um, now what I'm doing, my new project, it's all about working in the villages and rural areas. So I want to change everything. I understand like a lot of people told me it's not easy, but when yes. it told me that it's impossible, I work really more harder to make it possible. So that's my aim at the moment. I'm an entrepreneur. I've started my own firm, which is Majestic by Shweta Singh. Uh, I'm doing lots of other work. I want to share a few pictures of, of, of yours. You are still a pilot and it's, it's really nice. It's, it's not an easy job to fly on the air. I remember once I read uh, Dr. Kalam, our former president's book, Fire of Life. In that he said, I, I saw the birds flying and then I even it inspired me to, to fly on the air. So what made you fly and a lot of uh, appreciation. I just want to read it out. It's uh, you, you're, you got the governor's gold medal award presented by the governor TV Raj Shaker for best cadet in 2004. And you were the best fly, uh, pilot award from India, All India Air Force, and Pride of Sun Beef College Award, Best Grooming Award, Program Qatar Airways, Letter of Appreciation as Cabin Services Director, Trainers Trainer Award, and a lot more. Congratulations to you. What made you become a pilot? What why did you choose that line? Uh, as I mentioned, Dr. Shilata, I come from a village in Uttar Pradesh where until very recently being born as a girl child was never the norm of celebration. My sister and I, since the age of 9 and 16 respectively, were raised by a resilient, strong mother who never gave up on education in spite of financial crisis and background noises. Since my childhood, 
flying like a bird has been my cherished desire i always had big dreams dreams which many people told me are unachievable and the more people told me it can't be done the more determined i became in life to work harder with passion and leave a dent honestly for me it's never about women versus men challenge but it's all about my past versus my future as said in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity so during my first day in college in varanasi we got a memo about a voluntary selection in the youth air wing of indian armed forces many aspirants applied and in the interim four girls were recruited from my college fortunately i was one of them we went through military training with many other recruits in parades and remodeling and small arms training such as 0.22 rifle um 0.22 to the lux sport rifle and double barrel shotgun for skeet shooting lots of adventures and discipline exercises and then we were introduced to the beauty zen and micro light aircraft which is zenith stall ch701 short take off and landing i was trained under wing commander mm nasir sc who is a recipient of shorya chakra gallantry award so just a brief technical introduction about zen and micro light is that it is a two seater aircraft endurance of 4.6 hours the throtex 912 four cylinder liquid uh, cool piston 80 horsepower engine and it is designed by chris hines so from the very first day our rigorous training all zen and micro light began when i airborne the, the commanding officer for uh, familiarization sortie this was the first time dr shila that i had ever been on an aircraft so to live among the clouds the feelings are always wow. a combination of uh, exhilaration excitement and freedom the training and discipline was very intense but it was all worth it to be able to compete at all india biosenic flying competition which took place at jakur aerodrome in bengaluru okay. a uh, total of 47 air flying units from 15 directorates across the country took part in the competition we had written exams familiarization flights and then practical flying sortie where the examinee is in the command of the aircraft under the supervision of the air force flying commanding officer who is the examiner when the result was announced i think the hard work was finally paid off then so being the first uh, female pilot gold medalist from uttar pradesh was my first baby step forward to success to work really? hard and let's see not only to improve my life but the lives around me oh, that's lovely that's lovely that's lovely it's 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 not that you should dream you should dream and achieve it yes, yes. yeah and um, i heard in 2018 you were uh, you were uh, you were uh, awarded as a mrs india award and uh, it was in the lifestyle magazines also it's a light magazines also can you show some light on that uh about mrs india um dr shila it was never my dream to become mrs india honestly um however it certainly felt like a dream after receiving the title and the crown so okay. just a little bit background story about what happened was one day i was just at my home and, it, and an agency contacted me having noticed one of my social media platforms and they requested me to enter international beauty pageant so at oh, first wow. i was a little circumspect about the contact so i asked a member of my team to do some due diligence and mm-hmm. <laughs> get the credibility of the organization etc and all these things and this would always be my first advice for any person who's looking to enter beauty pageant so thereafter i was provided details of my nearest audition locality and truly it was very competitive on the day mm-hmm. of audition there were well over 300 contestants and later on i found out that over 10000 people had auditioned across the country wow. so i immediately understood this was going to be a tough competition not yeah it's not yeah so after being initially selected i thought i may just get to the next round only in case it was a 7 months process and which covered many types of social work online promotion raising of funds for charity cat walks learning and designing your own outfits so a lot of tasks were given to us during that time and the semi finale mm. took place abroad in greece which was quite magical and uh, it was however a very grueling schedule non stop for 5 days early morning starts and very late finishes with little or no time to rest in between 
What amazed me was each contestant had gone to in order to improve themselves over the seven months period. I barely recognized some of my co-contestants. And what more amazed me further was the way the entire group came together to help and support each other, both physically and emotionally. The finale was in Delhi, which was very spectacular. And I was very proud to have come through to the final and then be crowned in front of my family, in front of my mother, wow. my husband, my sister, watching in the crowd. This is India to do the Honestly, I never dreamed, let alone ever thought entering a beauty pageant. However, like mm -hmm. anything in life, if it is mm -hmm. worth doing, then it is worth doing it well. Wow. 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 Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Achievers Award 2018 and uh, you are a brand ambassador for IIT Delhi alumni. And of course, you are Miss World. Uh, Miss, Miss India Worldwide in 2018. Wow, that's 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 really uh, amazing, amazing. Amazing. The blessings of my mother, my family. You know, I've got a very supportive yeah. husband, Dr. Shilata. And uh, when I meet inspiring people like you, it inspires me more to do much better in my life. So I think uh, uh, the credit goes to everyone, not only me. It's just that I'm putting my effort, but from behind, there are a lot of you know helping hands. And uh, I think for the past 10 years, you are in London. How do you manage being in London and working here? And here you are, you are, you are a very, very busy person. So how, how do you manage work life, home and as well as in different countries? Uh, Dr. Srilata, for me, I always consider like female, they are multitaskers. They have to have the superpower because everybody is unique. And at the end of the day, you have to find out time for your own family, for your own work. And you have to, right. if you're very much focused in your work, I think everything is possible, no matter in which part of the country you are, whether you're in India or United Kingdom. And we have so many technologies now. So it's much easier for me to commute and communicate. And that helps me a lot with my work. And uh, I try to balance everything. That's what is needed to have a good life. Excuse me. And I, I heard just a few days back, you have come back from UK and uh, you're on your project in uh, rural India. I think it's in uh, Uttar Pradesh, rural Uttar Pradesh you are doing? Yes. Uh, at present, we have started our work in Haryana. And Haryana, our project was already started last year. Then we'll move to Uttar Pradesh. In Haryana, as well as in Uttar Pradesh, this, uh, you're working in the rural area and helping the children and um, uh, and and ba uh, reasonably backward areas you're going. But nowadays, the children, they are compared to the earlier days, they're much better. What do you think the children want today? have better scope, better vision, better opportunity compared to those and uh, those who are and even uh, to some extent the parents also support them. What do you want to say? What do you say about it? Nah, the children nowadays today, how, how they are, they are better benefited through the, all these NGOs and to, uh, through the, all the people who are supporting them. This is a very pertinent question, uh, Dr. Shilata. In today's day and age, by parents, societies and governments that the global standard of living should rise and continue to do so for future generations, right? So, however, it would be perilous to assume children born today would have better lives than their parents. Whether they are uh, orphans or whether they have got families to look after. So this is due to a number of factors which exist today that did not necessarily exist before. In general terms, we live ever more complex lives with heightened levels of competition and access to information that simply did not exist. Secondly, due to changes in the Earth's climate and matters of global pandemics, now a stark reality. Children born today will have to face unprecedented challenges. 
and the occurrence of these global challenges will only increase as our society evolves. More positively, we are now seeing large and multinational coordination between leading states for the betterment of our holistic future. This is due to primarily a large awareness campaign surrounding the various societal and environmental challenges. Thirdly, leading states with responsible governance are dedicating huge budgets towards tackling this mutual concerns. Finally, the using innovation and technology are working together with government bodies to help address these concerns before they become a reality. Uh, Dr. Srilata, on a more micro level, our future generations are benefiting from direct and in most cases, free access to information by the internet and smart technology. Whilst yes. for the most part this can and does benefit the younger generations, a lot of our children's future depends on how they are raised and nurtured in their respective homely environments. The priorities mm -hmm and support that younger generations receive from their parents and elders no doubt has a large impact on their personality, their behavior and ultimately how they will develop later on in life. From a person point of view, growing up in a feudal and rural society, mm -hmm. I was faced with prejudices and bias predominantly from the elder and main members of my local society as if to be born as a girl was a huge crime. After the untimely passing away of my father at such a young age, my mother faced both extreme financial pressure as well as social pressure to get me married and not waste money on my education. However, my mother who took stand, she believed in me and always encouraged me to follow my dreams. With support and guidance and the example of backbreaking work always in front of me, I had all the ingredients to push forward, get out, knock on doors and shatter the glass ceiling. I am but one example where the guidance and personal upbringing can have such a massive impact on a child's life. And I'm elated to say that today, there is a huge celebration whenever a girl is born in my village. <laughs> that's really good, that's good, that's good. To some extent, now it has changed. The girl and boy, not much differences are there, but still, but still in some rural places or in some even in cities or somewhere some families they believe yeah boy is born it's it's good for the family it's an asset for the family but uh, what according to you so uh, you you have gone to so many villages and uh, worked with the, with the people what uh, do you think what worries you that the people are taking it very lightly like say some uh, for instance now people are uh, during this pandemic people are wearing masks and uh, protecting themselves but to major portion of people they are not doing it like that what uh, what you think people are very careless or they don't worry it doesn't matter and it actually they should they should uh, what uh, in which uh, field you feel like that uh, the importance should be given to the to some uh, like maybe for the uh, toilets and other places like that or what uh, what uh, what do you think why people are taking it very lightly they don't worry it's okay it's chalta hai like that your uh, safety and the safety of your family is in your hands and uh, the rules are made you know, for our own protection. It's all up to us how we abide. Sometimes people, they say it's fine to break the rules. You know, just, as you said, just that kind of attitude. We should ignore those kind of things. At the end of the day, if you don't worry about yourself, at least worry about your family, your children at home, your elders at your places. And, you know, take all the safety precautions, keep washing your hands at all point of time, wear your mask. And with God's grace, the vaccination is all over the world now. I already received my first dose and waiting for the second. So, you know, it's, it's a blessing. We are in a, such a fast technology world that the awareness is so much there. So I would request all the people, you know, just to come forward and take the vaccine and protect yourself. We have been in this pandemic for more than a year now. I remember enough, yes. yeah. uh, March was our first lockdown in India and uh, the economy has suffered, the family has suffered. You know, our, uh, especially people like doctors, nurses, all the the care workers, the delivery people, you know, working hard. They have worked so hard for us. 
and this is the time to pay off so if we can do a small little things just you know making sure that we take you know safety the in first hand wear the mask at all point of time sanitize our hands and if you see any person who can't afford that even you know i feel very surprised at, on the road when people are walking if even if it's a female she you know make sure that she covers her face with a dupatta so awareness is there people understand how important is this and if you see a, if someone is not doing it it's your right to go forward and tell the person just please wear your mask not only for your safety but the, the safety of the people around you so i think this has to be practiced and uh, fingers crossed we'll be out of this pandemic very soon and get back to our normal life <laughs> i hope very soon by this year we should uh, we should be in in a normal uh, and and this and um, yeah people are aware of it but they are sometimes i think they are neglecting it also they feel like like i said it's chalta hai it's it's a social problem for them and regarding the social what social stigma does society need to get over wow <laughs> yeah. um from my perspective uh, social stigma leads to prejudices which are both unreasonable and troublesome for society yeah. with the nations of this planet we are constantly seeing stigmas associated with individual skin color you know race and creed uh this is no longer cross border stigma however it is within the population of each country the stigmas are leading to inherent prejudices towards female and cross gender individuals racism towards people of a certain skin color which has led to large scale global movements such as uh, black lives matters and in some countries outright changes in national policies to favorite certain castes and creeds over others within the same country this has long happened dr shilata in tribal conflicts in africa for an example but yeah the color nowadays it's slowly it is going out the colors clear uh, all that whether you are black or brown or fair fair complexion it's it's the work that is more recognized <laughs> yeah uh, and um, but but still in um, in some places i find people are uh dark complexion complexion people are looked down upon and it it it, it should not be actually we should, we should change ourselves yeah i agree to that dr shreya just a small simple example uh i went to one of the store and then this um, the staff who was working there she approached me to assist me with all the products she had and she said why don't you apply this because uh, it will help you to get rid of dusky skin and i said but i love dusky skin you know i love to be tanned i love you know i, I love dark complexion i love it why why i want to go on a fair complexion i know that i am you know my complexion is not dusky but still i love love having dark skin i love tanning myself under the sun and i was very surprised even she got a bit shocked because i think this 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 has become a culture from our ancestors our elders they always used to say that uh, if the girl is fair or if the boy is of the guy is fair uh, they are they are the prettiest ones but now the mentality is changing people are going more towards darker complexions they're loving it and you know it's just about how you look from outside it's all about how you are inside as a person you should have a beautiful yes. heart and that's what it matters for me that's the beauty yes. Yes, that, that's the beauty. Yes, yes, and um, you, you have you have achieved a lot. You have accomplished a lot. From you, you have come from uh, from a rural background, and slowly you have achieved a lot. You have done a lot for the society, and you have accomplished quite a lot. Quite a lot. And anyway, still, still, you have quite a, a long years to go. What are your future goals in your life? my mother didn't have enough finances to get her both mine and my sister's education so i gave up studying after my graduation just to meet the responsibility of my family i worked bloody hard in my life <laughs> so that not only my younger sister but also both my cousins had all the resources they needed to complete higher education at reputable universities and so that they can achieve their dreams today watching them settled and financially independent makes me feel accomplished and happy at the same time 
presently i feel accomplished like anyone else when i have put my mind towards completing a very difficult task which is for the betterment of someone who is less fortunate than myself this applies to anyone whom i may be working with or on behalf of as an example working for society who face economic challenges or working with a group of individuals who are economically sound but suffer from incurable health elements and the spectrum in between have brought me great joy and satisfaction When I began my career as a pilot in our armed forces being able to take a plane up into the sky by myself really gave me a sense of how far I had literally come being honored by the political leaders of our country and commander in chief Dr APJ Abdul Kalam at Rashtrapati Bhavan was especially very gratifying for me and what made it all the more happy was how proud my mother was on that day for my future goals as you asked uh, i want to do anything and everything mujhe sab kuch karna hai and i want to leave behind a legacy as i mentioned before of love and kindness the situation on the ground is always fluid and it is up to us to stay flexible to keep up with the moving times Beyond this my goals are just as anyone else is in the world to try and remain fit and healthy in this challenging times to continue yes. to work hard and to continue to see people being uplifted by the social programs i'm doing with the government authorities and finally to be able to travel more freely around the world so i may continue to engage with stakeholders yes. and leaders to bring about positive changes for our people very nice answer actually i wanted to ask you about you you are a founder of navami and you are a founder of majestic shweta singh with regards to uh my company majestic by shweta singh my most recent initiative is navami uh, which is the national ambassador for villages and aspiration for mission india with our vision self reliant rural india atmanirbhar gramin bharat so this initiative is designed to help lift the economy of the rural sector the place where i grew up and to where my heart belongs so our initiative spans many individual projects both physical and in terms of coordinating on behalf of the multiple stakeholders firstly we are looking to help bring investment into the rural sector by improving in incumbent infrastructure of any given village this in turn mm-hmm. improves the living standards of the population and helps the area look more attractive to outside investors as we all know nearly 2/3 of the indian population still lives in rural settings therefore the nation's largest resource its people and their respective talent remains hidden and untapped and therefore unable to add proportional value to the economy therefore devami has been working as a catalyst to help regional national and international companies to tap into the rural workforce and just as an example uh, Recently Navami was well placed to help a regional footwear brand in Haryana outsource part of its annual production to rural based factory where we employ local females in a clean and well managed environment the customer is extremely happy with the quality of the products and likewise the factory is enjoying regular work translating into regular income for the factory owner and his employees an increase in disposable income inevitably leads to an increase in standards of living this is but one illustration of how navami is working to add value okay. to the rural sector and its respective collaborators see you see yourself 5 years from now 5 years in me as a majestic by swash with us a well accomplished entrepreneur and mm-hmm. uh, a philanthropist so that's how i look myself at 5 years from now and um, yeah that's that's my dream and that's my aim <laughs> okay okay that's that's a that's a very uh, diplomatic answer <laughs> okay and we have almost come to the end of this uh, show in this talk show and uh, you would like to tell our viewers something about uh, something about your views and about our view, uh, to our, to our view, uh, viewers Uh I would love to my message yeah. to each one of you watching us is always remember confidence is something 
you can teach yourself over the years. I have learned this from my lifeline, my mother and my husband, who have showed me that it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. What really matters is how big your dreams are. So on this positive note, I express my gratitude to Dr. Srilata for having me and also to all our esteemed audience once again. Please take care, be safe and keep smiling. <laughs> Namaste. That's a, that's a very nice, nice. You, you have so much of um, uh, desire to do so many things in your life. Yes, you will achieve it. And since life is, as, as I said in the beginning, your life is not of uh, roses, it's of thorns. But still, you have achieved so many things, so many things in your life. And our blessings and wishes, everybody's wishes is there. Definitely you will do for your for the society and your heart is in India. Whether you are in London or in yeah, any other place, but your heart is in India. Definitely you will achieve whatever you wish for. Yes, because Thank I'm a proud Indian and I'm say this with pride. No matter which part of the country I am, in any part of the world I am. But never forget your roots, that's the main thing. And never forget yes. how hard we have worked to be where you are at the moment. Yes, and with that note, we will uh, we'll take leave. We'll meet you, uh, we'll meet again with some more projects, some more uh, talks, we, uh, I, we want to talk to you. So till then, goodbye. Goodbye from Odyssey. <laughs>